I'm Lucy from Fred's Chicken. I'm the operations manager for this restaurant. For some reason, we are having problems getting customers in the door. I'm still not quite sure why. We pride ourselves based on our quality and service. I have noticed that our prices seem to be high compared to our competitors. However, I do not know what we can change. We are already struggling financially, so I can't lower the prices. Oh look, here's a customer. Let's see how their experience is going. Hi sir, how is your food? The skin on my chicken's burnt and it tastes terrible. Your chicken's not burnt. Just peel the skin off and it'll be okay. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, I'm never coming back. Well, that's one less customer. Let me take you and show you our kitchen. Right here we have the refrigerator where we store our chicken. Over here is where we prepare our chicken. We have the batter here. We use stove tops and skillets to cook our chicken. Sometimes we have an issue meeting the demand of our chicken because it takes so long to cook. Oh, well here's a piece right now. Let's just stick that back in. Sometimes we run out of chicken because we don't order enough from our suppliers. And over here is our supply cabinet where we maintain all of our supplies. We buy our chicken from a supplier five states away. We buy our potatoes from a supplier two states away. And all our other sides we buy from suppliers all over the United States. It's very hard to maintain our inventory and it always seems to be off. We are constantly running out of supplies. I am also having a difficult time getting my employees to show up to work. And when they do show up, it seems that their minds are elsewhere. I just don't know what I'm going to do. There are many improvements that Lucy can make to be a better operations manager. There are many adjustments that can be made so that Fred's Chicken can stay in business and become more profitable. To start things off, they need to look at their suppliers. They need to do a vendor analysis to determine the best source for the price, quality, reputation, and service. Buying chicken from a supplier five states away may not be the cheapest. I'm sure there is a supplier closer so that the transportation costs would be less, as well as the lead time. Not as much would have to be ordered at once. This should cut down on some of the costs. Quality is very important. If a customer says that the food is burnt, then the manager should have got the customer fresh chicken from the kitchen. The quality of goods is very important so that the customer keeps coming back. If you cannot drop the price of chicken, then the quality of the food has to be good and customer service has to be excellent. Poor quality leads to a loss of business, liability, productivity, and costs. Also, Lucy should look into getting fryers so that they can make chicken faster and so that the customers do not have to wait. The productivity would be faster because more chicken could be made. Also, fryers have a timer so most of the time the chicken should not get burnt. In a skillet, a worker has to make sure that they flip the chicken so that it doesn't burn. This is not an efficient way to run a restaurant business. Dropping food on the floor and using it and not keeping the restaurant clean is another mistake. It is very important to have the appropriate ethics and to keep things sanitized and clean. Finally, it is important to have good employees. Sometimes training can help, other times you just have to find replacements. Your workers should have the same goals as the management team. These are just a few examples of how Lucy could be a better operations manager. Hello, I'm Franny with Quimby's Used Car. I am currently the operations manager for the entire franchise for the state of Illinois. My boss says I have two weeks to turn things around or I'll be known as the former operations manager. My boss says my forecasting, inventory, and location planning techniques are all wrong. I'd like to get your opinion though. I keep two cars in stock at every location, at all times. I really believe that I've made it simpler for the customers by offering them only two choices. They really only need two. I do keep at least 100 grills in stock at each location though, because really, we sell way more grills than cars. Who would have thought the highest selling item at a used car dealership would be grills anyway? My boss keeps saying I should set goals for the salesman by doing some forecasting for each dealership. But I just don't see the point. I mean, he says it will help me get better numbers for inventory control too, but if they can't sell one of the two cars on the lot, then why do it? When I first started, I did try the whole forecasting thing, but the sales never hit my forecasting mark anyway. Here, let me show you what I was doing. I had this graph here I was going off of that shows our previous sales. 
Well, you know, simple forecasting. You want to forecast for more sales. So this is what I did. I just took where we were, and I marked it up. And it never worked. Never worked. We should just leave forecasting up to the weatherman anyway. Now, I know my location planning technique is perfect because I only pick areas where the dealerships can be seen for miles. This is the state of Illinois. I've placed all our dealerships in these areas. Here, 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 and here. That way they can be seen for miles where there's absolutely nothing to block our beautiful car. And I tell my boss all the time, it's like they say, if you build it, they will come. Now that I've shown you my technique, I guess I really don't need your opinion. <laughs> because in reality, I already knew I was right. I'll just have to start firing my crummy managers and hire some people who actually know what they're doing around here. While Fannie may think that she has it all figured out, she could definitely benefit by changing her techniques. Franny should keep a larger supply of cars in each dealership inventory. The only reason grills have been their best seller is because they have a large quantity for people to choose from. She is actually hurting the sale of cars by not giving customers more options. They should carry a larger supply of cars than grills because that is the main items the business wants to sell to customers. Franny has lost sight of the importance of forecasting. Forecasting is a valuable tool for companies because it tells them what they can expect for future demand. Once Franny adds more cars to dealership inventory, she can start looking at current demand and better plan inventory for each dealership by using forecasting techniques. Forecasting will help her match supply to demand, saving the company money. Since location planning has a huge impact on a company, a more thorough process for a location should be completed. Location decisions are tied to a company's strategy. Quimby's used cars wants to sell a lot of cars, so they should place dealerships in high traffic locations where they can be seen by a lot of people each day. Franny could also consider local taxes, proximity of other car dealerships, cost and availability of utilities, and availability of salesmen to work in that area. These changes are not easy or quick, but must be implemented to save Quimby's used cars. Yeah, yeah, I could totally meet you there. Okay, I gotta go, I gotta do this thing real quick. All right, bye. Hello, I am Felipe, and I am head of operations at the Super Amish Factory Outlet, and I have to admit, I'm a bad operations manager. Honestly, I think we make the worst Amish furniture in the world. Our furniture is horrible, and I am surprised I still have a job. Our product design process is very disorganized, the layout of our facility is a joke, and productivity, what productivity? You would think that product design for Amish furniture would be an easy task. After all, we're just making the same furniture that Amish people have been making for years. But I'm not Amish, and neither are any of my employees. I just dress this way to trick people into thinking I'm the real deal. How hard can it be? Make a table and some chairs. Shouldn't be that hard. I think card tables are probably sturdier than the ones that we make. We feel that the time taken to figure out the design for our products is a waste of time and it takes away from our breaks. So we just figure that attaching four wooden legs to the top of the table should be good enough. What more do people yeah, want from us? See this stool here? We made this and it is sturdy as a rock. One of the things that my employees have complained about is the layout of our production facility. I decided that we should work outdoors to keep with the spirit of the Amish. They complain that the steps in the process are very disorganized and they have to run all over the place to get the task done. I think they're just being little crybabies. They act like they should have it easy even though they're getting paid $5.50 an hour. We have a very large facility, so I figured it would be most important to make sure that no space goes to waste. I have the wood over there. And I have the tools over there and the workshop is way over there in that corner. My employees are complaining that they have to run around to get everything done, but I say that is my way of keeping them all in shape. Ha <laughs> ha!
I do have to admit that there are some cycles in the furniture making process that take longer than others. Sometimes I will have some employees working on shaping the legs of the furniture while the employee that attaches the legs will have nothing to do. They complain that there is probably a more efficient way of getting the furniture made in less time. I think they're just trying to defy my authority. See, this is an example of my lazy employees. Look at it. Work harder, you bum! Because my employees are always bickering about how nothing gets done right, nothing gets done at all. Our productivity levels are probably the worst in the Amish furniture industry. To be honest, I don't understand what it means to have common measurements to see how productive we are. The only kind of measurements that I understand are inches and feet. How am I supposed to measure productivity with that? Basically, we don't really get any furniture made. We will maybe put together the occasional chair or table, but it really doesn't make us any money. That is why I must shop at the Goodwill store to buy my snazzy outfits. Is there any way that I could be running my business any better? It looks like Felipe definitely has some work to be done to become a successful operations manager. The Amish Furniture Outlet definitely needs some help with their product design. They think that combining a few pieces of wood together means that they are making furniture. They need to take the time to design a product that will give their customers a product with quality. Felipe needs to start at the drawing board and figure out a way to make a sturdy and sustainable product that will live up to the Amish tradition. This may take some time and money for decent research and development, but it might be worth it in the long run. The layout of Felipe's facility is not one to make a product efficiently. First off, he should probably purchase or build an actual building for him and his employees to work in. A job like furniture building should not be done outdoors, where the weather can destroy the final product. Also, Felipe needs to make a precedence diagram so that he can find the optimal time for each cycle of the production process to eliminate idle time. This will allow his workers to be more productive with their time. The location of equipment needed for the operations will also need to be more centralized so that employees do not spend too much time going back and forth for each step in the production process. Lastly, Felipe needs to learn the basics of measuring productivity. He needs to understand how to unify measurements by a common unit, such as units per labor hour or material usage per unit produced. Being able to measure productivity is increasingly important to operations management because it allows the manager to fix parts of the production process which are not being as efficient or effective as they should.